no updates yet on what the problem is that has made it virtually impossible for us to take pledges. Um, but we will keep you updated. In the meantime, uh, our call service is set up to take down rudimentary information, name and address, so that we can send you a bill. We could certainly use the money. KPFA.org. Sorry, not KPFA.org. 1-800-439-5732. This is KPFA 94.1 FM in Berkeley. KPFB 89.3 FM in Berkeley. KFCF 88.1 FM in Fresno. K248BR 97.5 FM in Santa Cruz. K232FZ 94.3 FM in Monterey. And online at KPFA.org. Except for right now when everything online is broken. Uh, I'm Brian edwards Teekert. Thank you for bearing with us. Stay tuned. I'm Sasha Lilly, joining you in this hour as we count down to the end of KPFA's Spring Fun Drive at 7 p.m. this evening. Making Contact will return next week. The acclaimed physician Gaur Mate believes that capitalist society damages us at an early age and that we carry that trauma through our lives, making us alienated, sick, and often prone to destructive behaviors. Mate is the author of a number of internationally best-selling books, including In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, When the Body Says No, and most recently, his magnum opus, The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture. And he's received the Hubert Evans Prize for Literary Nonfiction and the Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award. Mate's work is featured in an award-winning film called The Wisdom of Trauma, which is directed by Zaya and Maurizio Bonazzo. And we're going to play edited excerpts from that film today. We have only five more hours before the fun drive comes to an end. And I have to say we're quite short of our goal. We're hoping you will support us with a generous pledge to this radio station, whether you've given before or it's your first time. You can access the film for a pledge of $12 a month or $120 in one go. Here's a portion of The Wisdom of Trauma. Our earliest experiences being in the womb formed a template of who we believe we are, about how we see other people, and our place in the world. When I see human faces, I see beauty, I see tremendous suffering, and enormous potential for transcendence. A Greek playwright wrote that the gods created us human beings so that we have to suffer into truth. Our job as human beings is to learn from our suffering. We don't have to keep perpetuating pain for ourselves and inflicting suffering on others. In working with so many people, I've learned that working through trauma can teach us so much wisdom and can reveal the beauty of our existence that because of trauma we had lost sight of. My name is Gabor Mate. I'm a retired medical doctor and these days I travel the world speaking and teaching about child development, health, illness, stress, and trauma. And speaking about trauma is really part of the zeitgeist these days. And I'm very passionate about it for a simple reason. Because in 30 years or more of medical practice and of addiction medicine, what I found was that the common template for virtually all afflictions, mental illness, physical disease, is in fact trauma. And there's a wisdom in trauma. When we realize that our traumatic responses and imprints are not ourselves, and that we can work them through and thus become ourselves.
virtually every week there's a study that more and more people are needing or seeking uh, help for their mental health issues. More and more youth are diagnosed with anxiety. Many more kids are diagnosed with the whole plethora of childhood conditions such as ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder. Depression is rising. Youth suicide is rising. Addictions are rising. Genuinely, it's an epidemic. percent of youth or more are now diagnosable with anxiety according to all the recent study that that's a one-fifth and those are all the people who are sufficiently anxious to be diagnosed but we're talking about an epidemic when you're grow up in a circumstance like i grew up you're waiting for somebody to scream at you you're waiting for something to be thrown you don't know if you're going to eat. You don't know if you're going to be evicted. So you're constantly anxious and stressed. I used to think this was a rarity. But when I talk to people, a huge number of people have these traumatic experiences as a child that carry, they carry with them. It's like a monkey on your back. Trauma is an overwhelming threat that you don't know how to deal with. So trauma is not the bad things that happen to you, but what happens inside you as a result of what happens to you. My father was uh, shot and killed on December 25th, 1999. They found his body in someone's front yard. So essentially, I didn't have anybody to raise me, so I was raised in the juvenile court system. I've lived on the streets since I was 10 years old by myself. The law didn't scare me, and, and I mean, they could have locked me up. And what's the difference? Nobody out here is going to miss me. So trauma fundamentally means a disconnection from self. Why do we get disconnected? Because it's too painful to be ourselves. That then becomes a lifelong dynamic. I no longer know how to deal with emotions. Uh, it means that in relationships, when I feel a bit hurt, I immediately withdraw, so I don't have to feel those emotions that I don't know what to do with. So there's a disconnect. It also means that when I have gut feelings, I don't follow them. So I create situations of risk for myself. Now, trauma also affects how our brains develop certain key brain circuits that have to do with how we react and respond and regulate ourselves, how we handle stress, how we interact with other people, how much empathy and insight that we have, how much compassion we have. These functions of the midfrontal cortex are limited and constricted by trauma because we now know that the brain develops an interaction with the environment. So the brains of traumatized children don't look like the brains of non-traumatized children. During your first 18 years of life, if a parent or other adult in the household often or very often would swear at you, insult you, put you down or humiliate you, step inside the circle. If a parent or other adult in the house teacher never gets a single lecture on time, they're fundamentally working with an essential lack of information. I should barely mention the criminal justice system has no understanding or even acquaintance with the concept of trauma. In fact, they often create policies that further deepen people's trauma. Now, these institutions need to be informed of what trauma is and how to respond to it. We heal in community. When I do these circles with anybody, when they see the extent of childhood trauma in themselves, but also in the people around them. It's a shift. It, it takes the othering out. It actually brings a human in. And that as a society is one of, the, one of the imperatives that we need to get to. We gotta start seeing each other for what happened to us and not what's wrong with us. And that's a portion from the film. It's an award-winning documentary film titled The Wisdom of Trauma, and it features Dr. Gabor Mate, the film is directed by Zaya and Maurizio Bonazzo. And for your pledge of support to KPFA at the rate of $12 a month or $120 in one go or more, I should add, 
uh, you can get access to that film. I'm Sasha Lilly. This is a special program on the last day, in fact, the waning hours of KPFA's Spring Fun Drive. We have a great deal of ground to make up before the day comes to an end. And with your help, I'm hoping that in this hour, we can generate a significant amount of money to keep KPFA vibrant and vital and uh, producing the kinds of information that you expect here on KPFA. KPFA.org or 1-800-439-5732 is the number to call. That's 1-800-HEY-KPFA. I encourage you to pledge at KPFA.org because it is the most cost-effective way for us to take your pledge, and it's probably the fastest for you. But honestly, however you do, we're just super grateful if you're supporting us right now. In this hour, we are offering the book, The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture, written by Gabor Mate, along with his son, Daniel Mate, for a pledge of $15 a month or more, $150 or more in one go. Uh, you can also get the film, $12 a month or $120. I strongly encourage you to think about getting both together for a pledge of $170. Uh, and, you know, there are many wonderful thank you gifts right now on kpfa.org. Really, the important thing is that you step forward and support us right now uh, because uh, how this fund drive ends has everything to do with the kind of resources that KPFA will have in the coming months. And we know that the coming months are going to be complicated, they're going to be tumultuous, and you're going to want to have the critical perspectives that you probably don't find elsewhere, or at least not like at KPFA, uh, here. And we can only do what we can, and we do operate on a shoestring with the resources we get through Fundrive. So I'm hoping that you will right now go to kpfa.org and pledge as generously as you possibly can, whether you've pledged already during this drive or it's the first time. Uh, we are grateful whichever way we just really know that at this point, uh, in our hour of need, we need your support. kpfa.org, 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Gabor Mate talks about uh, the connection between illness, addiction, trauma, and the society that we live in. Um, he talks about that in the film, The Wisdom of Trauma, and he writes about it in The Myth of Normal. He talks about how Trauma shapes the way we live and the way that we make sense of the world. And that has both, of course, all sorts of personal implications, but also political implications. And that we cannot think about how to heal people from trauma without thinking collectively. KPFA, of course, is about the collective, acting collectively, supporting this radio station collectively, providing information that is essential for you, but for the larger community beyond you that you are connected to through these airwaves. 1-800-439-5732 is the number to call and pledge, kpfa.org, kpfa.org. We encourage you to be a sustainer. If you're not already, that's a way of supporting us month to month with a steady flow of income. Uh, or you can, of course, choose to pledge in just one go. Uh, we are grateful to you whichever way you do it, and we would be so happy to send you a copy of The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture, the book by Gabor Mate. Really his, I, I called it at the top of the program, his magnum opus, because I think it draws from uh, so much of the wisdom of his previous books into a rather substantial volume that is uh, yet simultaneously accessible. You can dip into it in many different places. It is not something you have to read cover to cover, but full of insight and revelation. 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA or kpfa.org. Bessel van der Kolk, himself well known for his book, The Body Keeps the Score, writes, Gabor Mate takes us on an epic journey of discovery about how our emotional well-being and our social connectivity, in short, how we live, is intimately entwined with health, disease, and addictions. Chronic mental and physical illnesses may not be separate and distinct diseases, but intricate, multi-layered processes that reflect maladaptations to the cultural context that we live in and the values we live by. 
This riveting and beautifully written tale has profound implications for all of our lives, including the practice of medicine and mental health. That's Bessel van der Kolk uh, writing about Gabor Mate's book, The Myth of Normal, yours for a pledge of $150 or more by going to kpfa.org or calling 1-800-439-5732. And of course, you can get the film, The Wisdom of Trauma, featuring Gabor Mate for a pledge of $120 or more. I want to go back now to more from the film, but I want to encourage you to pledge and pledge as generously as you can. If you can pledge in this hour at the $500 rate, the $1,000 rate, the $2,000 rate, uh, we would be most grateful to you. If what you can afford is $50, we are utterly grateful to you. 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA, kpfa.org. Now more from the Wisdom of Trauma. Just a reminder, our uh, uh, website for the donation website is down now. Uh, you can still call the number, 1-800-439-5732. Uh, we're asking you to just go to the phone number. Uh, we're working on our website to get it back up, and we'll let you know as soon as, as, soon as it's back up to work. But, but for now, just the phone number, 1-800-439-5732. Thank you. Step inside the circle. Step inside the circle. We were talking about the effects of slavery on our behavior. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I ain't agree with it when I first heard it. But then when he talked about the discipline, I had a flashback of how I used to get whipped with a bull whip, naked. I didn't put the two or two together, but I realized, you know, that's how slaves was whipped. Because it was generational trauma passed on from one mother to another mother to another mother, and it passed on to me. I still got marks on my legs and stuff behind that. And I just remembered there was no one I could run to, no one I could help me. And she just was telling me how much she loved me, and she cried, and she beat me with a bullwhip. He's a best-selling author of four books published in 12 languages sold on five continents. Please welcome I actually wrote my speech out tonight, which I don't usually do, but maybe a, a nervousness in front of this group of strong women, you know, we all... The, 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 truth, the, the truth is that guys are afraid of women. I don't, really, I don't know if you realize that, but that's, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do is totally out of fear. Well, um, when you felt bad as a kid, who did you speak to? When the pain is there and there's no one to share it with, then the child has very limited resources to deal with that. And what they do is they disconnect from themselves. When you disconnect from yourself, you no longer have yourself. You've lost yourself. When we talk about trauma, we usually think of something terrible happening to a person. But that's not the only trauma there is. And so the other kind of trauma may not have to do with terrible things happening to you. A baby that you don't pick up will actually die. Even if you feed them and you change them and look after them. Because they get overwhelmed by their feelings. And they get overstressed. And so the baby needs the mother's and the father's brain to regulate her own brain, to regulate their emotions. It's not just that you're overwhelmed. It's also there's nobody there to hold you. I've often thought about the sources of my own issues. An infant, two months of age, in Hungary, when the Germans, the Nazis, marched into a country and they began to exterminate the Jewish population. So that was my first year of life, with a terrorized mother, grandparents killed in Auschwitz, a father away in forced labor, anti-Semitism, the ever nearing shadow of annihilation, and ultimately a separation from my mother. I was a little short of one year old when my mother had to hand me to a stranger in the ghetto of Budapest. And 
sent me away to some relatives in hiding, so I didn't, we didn't see each other for six weeks. And she didn't know if she would live or not. In her diary, she said that this was the hardest six weeks of her life. That was the experience of the first nearly year and a half of my life. And sometimes I thought, well, gee, I must have received a lot of love at the same time, otherwise it would be a lot more crazy than I actually am. For trauma to happen, you don't need Second World War, and you don't need racism, and you don't need genocide, and you don't need uh, uh, the privations of war. You just need parents who are so alienated from their own gut feelings that they will let their infants cry without picking them up, and that child is desperate for a relationship. That's all it takes. As a child, we have two fundamental needs. One need that's with us is infancy, and it's absolute, and it's not negotiable, is attachment. And so the other need, then, is authenticity. Authenticity, therefore, is the connection to ourselves. Because without authenticity, without a connection to our gut feelings, just how long do you survive out there in nature? So authenticity is not some new age, pseudo-spiritual concept. It's actually a survival necessity. What happens if in order to survive or to adjust your environment, you have to suppress your gut feelings. You have to suppress your authenticity. So normal society does not allow anger, and, 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 and the child who's angry must be separated. In other words, we have to threaten his attachment to relationships on which his life depends, so that he can suppress his emotions. Well, that child, if he learns the lesson well, will disconnect from their anger. And then he's a sitting duck for depression, mental illness, or for physical illness. Okay, so kid is angry. But how about helping him move through the anger to learn how to modulate it? Not to repress it, but to learn to become friends with it. We don't want people who are not angry. We want people who know that anger doesn't have to be destructive. In the life of every person who's ever been addicted and ever will be addicted, there's always trauma. An addiction is any behavior that a person finds relief in the short term and craves, but suffers negative consequences and cannot give it up. That's what an addiction is. It could be drugs, obviously, alcohol, nicotine. It could also be sex, it could be gambling, it could be shopping, it could be eating, it could be pornography, it could be the internet, it could be gaming, it could be work, it could be uh, relationships. That's what an addiction is. first issue is not why the addiction, but why the pain. In our society, there are two uh, myths around addiction. The pernicious one is the belief that addiction is a choice and that the decisions that arise out of addictions are therefore a matter of individual culpability. And so therefore, addicts for the most part are punished for being addicted. Now, the other belief around addiction, but still misleading, is that it's an inherited disease. It's a biological disorder of the brain. That belief is more humane, much more than the choice belief, because at least if somebody inherits a disease, they're not to be punished for it, but to provide, they're to be provided with treatment as with any disease. However, it's also misleading because it ignores why people really get addicted, which has got nothing to do with disease. It's among the normal human responses to trauma. When people are suffering, they want to escape their suffering. That's normal. interrupting just for a few minutes some edited portions of the film The Wisdom of Trauma which features Dr. Gabar Mate. I'm Sasha Lilly. I usually host 
Against the Grain, which is Monday through Wednesdays, noon to one. But I am here on the last hours of KPFA's Spring Fund Drive to do everything I can to help us close the gap. We are more than $100,000 short of our goal. Uh, we have a great deal to make before the day is up at 7 o'clock. I'm trying to do my utmost to uh, pull people together collectively to support this radio station because we need to be as strong as we can in the months ahead. And where we end this drive, how short we come up, is going to have everything to do with the kind of resources that we will or will not have in the coming months and the kind of programming that you'll receive. So I encourage you right now, if you're intrigued with what you've heard, to consider making a pledge, a very generous pledge to KPFA, kpfa.org or 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-HEY-KPFA. For a pledge of $150 or more, we'd love to give you The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Hil Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture, written by Gabor Mate. For a pledge of $120 or more, you can get the film, The Wisdom of Trauma, if you'd like to get them together for a pledge of $270 or more. This would be the time to do it. And of course, you can pledge at any rate uh, that you can afford, but we're strongly encouraging you to give as generously as you can right now. kpfa.org, 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Why is Gabor Mate important? Well, I would say it's because he takes conditions like ADHD or other struggles, mental health struggles, which we are told in the society are personal problems, and he places them in a social context. Instead of just saying that mental health issues are simply the result of bad genes or individual struggles and choices, including poor choices, he makes the connections that many of us suspect, but he backs them up with science and allows us to see how damaging our society is to our psyches and to our bodies. KPFA.org, 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA. And I would say that what we do here on KPFA is we make the connections which are not being made elsewhere. That we, uh, you know, that there's a huge bias within the media to see everything in personal terms, even the journalistic conceit of the personal story that is being told. Here on KPFA, we try to give you the structural analysis. We try to give you a sense of how things, disparate things are actually connected and interdependent upon one another. And it has everything to do with what kind of solutions then are necessary to change society. If it's all on the level of the individual, it's going to be very different than if you're thinking of broader structures and the need for collective action. And we are asking for a kind of collective action right now, which is uh, those of you listening to come together as generation upon generation of KPFA listeners has done and support the work that we do here uh, that, as you know, if you listen to KPFA, is possible simply because we are dependent on you, not corporations, not commercial sponsors, not underwriters, but you are listeners. 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-HEY-KPFA, kpfa.org. I'd like to return to more from the film, The Wisdom of Trauma, uh, but let me just remind you that you can pledge for it at the rate of $120 or more, or the Gabor Mate book, the Myth of Normal at the rate of $150 or more by going to kpfa.org or calling 1-800-439-5732. I'm Gabor's wife and I have been for close to 50 years. I met Gabor in October of 1967 when I was a first year student at UBC. I saw in the student newspaper that they were looking for cartoonists. So I just wanted to come back in on this recording and tell you that our website is back up, so you could do donate on the uh, kpfa.org and, and the phone number, 1-800-439-5732. And uh, you could donate on the phone number, and you could donate online now. We've got it back up. Thanks. I did this before I knew who he was before I'd had a conversation. But 
kind of mysterious guy. Dark, you know, intense. He was so interesting to me.